We are going to be working on problem solving for lesson one six today. So in order to do this, I need you to have your math journal out with you and read something with me. So you need your math journal. You need to be on page 13. And I want you to go ahead and read number one, the math message to yourself. So pause the video, get your math journal, page 13, and read number one, and then unpause the video. Okay, so hopefully at this point you have read that number one math message to yourself. And I don't know about you, but when you read that, for me, my brain went all sorts of different places because it was a big long paragraph and there were some big words in there that I wasn't 100% sure how to pronounce because they were from different countries. And so we have to have some strategies that we can use when we tackle a problem that is big like this. And I like to use something, let me use this blue one here. I like to use something like a four square thought where I have U, P, S, check. And these letters help me remember there are some things we need to do when we are problem solving. Scooch that over a little bit so you can see. Um, and I remember it as UPS check. So the first thing I want to do is I want to understand the problem. So if I look back at this big long paragraph of things that we are talking about here, I want to pull out just what's important. What do I know? So I know, first of all, I know Terrell is climbing stairs. He wants to climb stairs as fast as he can, and he has a goal, right? He had a goal to hit 400 stories. So if I was working on my actual journal, I could just underline that part to help my brain focus in on that number 400. So if you have your journal in front of you, you should. Would you just go ahead and underline 400 stories for me? Okay, then I'm gonna keep reading. So he wants to climb 400 stories, that's his goal. Then, up oh, there's a word, okay? Burj Khalifa, maybe. It's from the United Arab Emirates, and it's the world's tallest building and has 163 stories. So I'm gonna write down, that was United Arab Emirates, okay? I'm just gonna write the letters down so I don't have to worry about all the spelling of that building. And it was 163 stories. So I know I'm writing down that. So I make sure I understand what's happening in the problem. Then if I keep reading, the Patronus Towers, the tallest building in Malaysia, has 88 stories. So that one, I'm gonna do P for Patronus, and I know it is 88 stories. Just pulling out, what do I know? Make sense of the problem. So go ahead and underline that number two in your, in your question in your journal with me. And then it says the Zifeng Tower in China has 89 stories. So I'm gonna add that for my Z, 89. So all I'm doing right now is just pulling out what do I know, what have I learned from my problem, okay? And then it wants to know if Terrell climbs these three buildings, how many more stories will he need to reach his goal of 400? So sometimes it's important to know the information, of course, but also what is the question asking you to solve? So I'm thinking in my head in that question, I know his goal is to get to 400. So if his goal is to get to 400, he wants this building, this building, this building, and then he needs to climb one more set of stairs to get to his goal, right? So I'm thinking of all the pieces he has to get to this goal. So if I'm thinking about the problem, I start to come up with P, which is plan. I start to make a plan in my head of what does this look like? What is this question really asking me to do? And a really good strategy that we can use with that is drawing a picture. We can kind of get it in our head of what it is that it looks like that we wanna do. So I'm just gonna start sketching out some of the things that I know from this story. I know he has a whole goal, right? His goal is to reach 400 stairs or 400 stories. And I know he's already got three pieces. He's got 163 stairs here at the United Arab Emirates. He's got 88 stories here and he's got 89 stories 
and we want to know how many more does he need to get to his goal of 400 in all. So if I start to make a picture of what I know, now I start to see what I might do with math to be able to solve that. Do we know a strategy that's similar to this? Maybe the part, part total, but in this case I have part, 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 part total. So I have four parts and then I have a total, but it's the same idea. And if I take a moment to think through what I know, what I understand from the problem, and I make a plan with what I'm doing, now I can come up with the math that goes with it. So my S down here is for solve. So I know I have these three pieces, so I'm gonna add them up. I'm gonna add up the three pieces that I already have to see if I can figure out what's missing. I can do a list of all three of these if I want, but I'm gonna break down and just do two at a time. Make it a little simpler in my head to solve. I feel like that way maybe I might, I might make less mistakes because I'm doing simpler problems. So do this one with me. Three plus nine is 12. So I'm gonna put my two down and carry the one. Now I'm adding one plus six is, plus eight is, hopefully you said 15. So I'm gonna put my five and carry my one. One plus one is two. So now I've added my first two sets of stairs or stories, and I'm gonna add in my third. I'm gonna add in 88. So I added my first two, there's my third one. So if we add these up together, Two plus eight is 10, so we're gonna carry our one. One plus five is, plus eight is 14, carry my one. And one plus two is three. Okay, so now I know of the three buildings he's already climbed, I think about my picture, this number is 340. But we're not done, because the question wasn't asking how many stairs has he climbed. The question was asking how many more stairs does he need to climb to get to his goal of 400. So now that I solved that, I just need to find the difference. What's the difference between 340 and 400? So that sounds to me like a comparison. So I can just subtract this, okay? And I notice I've got nice, easy round numbers. So I'm thinking I could easily do that mental math. If I'm thinking of this as 34 and 40, I could think 34 plus 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, six, and put my zero back on there. Okay, that's one strategy that we could use. So now I get to the check. Now I wanna know, does this answer make sense? If I put 60 in my missing hole here, would it make sense that all four of these pieces add up to 400? So I'm gonna do a quick check. I'm gonna think 163 is very close. Remember our little wavy lines? It means it's not exactly equal to, but it's about equal, so it's kind of like rounding. I could say that's about equal to 160. 89 is about equal to 90. 88 is about equal to, we can say 90 again. And then our last one, 60, really doesn't need to be rounded, so we could just put that on there as well, okay? So now if I look at these numbers, I see this is pretty close to 100, pretty close to 100, so that would be like 200. Then this would be 300. And then 60 and 60, about 120, that'd be very close to 400. So I can quickly check that in my head. So one of the things I wanna make sure you're doing when you're checking is make it easy on yourself. A lot of times I see that you don't want to check your work because you wanna be done, or it seems like a lot of work to add those up again to double check your math. So if you do that strategy of rounding or estimating, it makes it it makes it a little easier to do, right? And that's okay, because now I know in my head, 100, 200, 300, 420. 420 is pretty darn close to our 400 goal, so this would be a reasonable answer to put in there. 
So you are gonna try some of this on your own. You're gonna see some problems on your journal page 13 and 14 coming up that are long like this. But don't be overwhelmed by how long the question is. I want you to use UPS check to try and work through it. Understand what you're doing, look at your information first. Draw some sort of picture or plan for how you might be able to solve it and then solve it. Don't be overwhelmed by the checking part over here, by the checking part. Find ways to make it make sense in your head so that you can just think through your answer. That's the idea. You wanna just think through what you've done and see, did it make sense or did I just make a simple mistake I need to go back and check? So your task is to look through page 13 and 14 in your journal, finish up these problem solving questions and turn them into your teacher when you're done to check.